Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Spain, and welcome to our 28th newsletter. In today's newsletter, we will talk about how NMN is vital to skin cell survival due to UV damage, and why, according to Dr. Sinclair, NMN is different from nicotinamide as an NAD booster, and lack of evidence that carbs are related to putting weight back on after a diet. First, a disclaimer that in this newsletter, we are sharing some news items and recent papers that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. First, we would like to give a shout out to our supporters who are very generous to buy us some coffees. It encourages us to continue to share information on aging research. Thank you so much for your support. Here is a tweet by Dr. Sinclair where he is answering a person on why just taking nicotinamide is not sufficient to boost your NAD levels. Here we can see his answer. It is because nicotinamide is just one component of NAD, which is a more complex molecule that also contains adenine, two ribosugars and two phosphates. Here is NAD, coloured so we can see the components. Nicotinamide is this section at the top. NMN provides this section of NAD and so is much closer to the target molecule. As another note, most NAD is made by the salvage pathway. NAM is here in the cycle. It needs to be converted by NAMPT to NMN. However, NAMPT is the rate limiting step in the cycle and restricts the speed at which NMN is made. NMN comes in after this step and so is more easily converted to NAD. Here we have a paper which is looking at the role that NMN can play in protecting skin cells from the effects of damage from UV radiation. UV radiation depletes the NAD in our skin. And as we've just discussed, NAMPT is the rate limiting enzyme in the salvage pathway and essential for maintaining our NAD levels. However, not many studies have looked at NAMPT in the skin with respect to radiation. As shown in this graph, NAMPT is an enzyme which converts nicotinamide, or NAM, to NAD+. In this study, they first showed that NAMPT prevents NAD depletion and so protects against mild doses of UV. They then showed that inhibiting PARP stopped the depletion of NAD. This makes sense as PARP repairs DNA damage, in this case caused by UV radiation, but in doing this, it consumes NAD and converts it to NAM. Next, they used NAMPT inhibitor FK866 to stop the action of NAMPT, which severely depleted the NAD pool, showing that this was the path through which NAD was being restored. The NAD depletion also deactivated P53, which stopped the cell from proliferating. This makes sense, as if the DNA is getting damaged, the cell does not have the NAD for PARP to repair it. It is better for the cell not to proliferate. These were in vitro, and adding NMN or NR was able to rescue the damaged cell in the absence of NAMPT, presumably by boosting the NAD levels. Therefore, NAD homeostasis is likely essential for the protection of skin cells when exposed to UV radiation. Although this was in vitro, it does show that maintaining our NAD levels is important for skin care, and having NMN in our system may help. It also seems to make sense that NMN-based skin creams could help by boosting the NAD in areas of skin exposed to the sun. Our next item also comes from a Dr. Sinclair tweet. This one was about a study which showed that the amount of carbs eaten had no effect on weight regain or fasting blood sugar levels after a diet. And as he said, this was not expected. Here is the study. Diet Composition, Glucose Homeostasis and Weight Regain in the Yo-Yo Study. So the first question might be, what is the Yo-Yo Study? They are referring to this study. The reason for the study was that after losing weight on a diet, many people proceed to put the weight back on afterwards. The researchers wanted to know what was causing this and was there a way of avoiding it. For example, one thing they looked at was whether losing weight fast in a short but very strict diet was better than losing it slowly with a milder, more long-term diet. This paper was using the data from the study to see if carbohydrate consumption was related to putting back on the weight, with the expectation being that it was. 
As they say, the thinking is that blood glucose levels affect weight loss and weight loss maintenance. They used the data from the yo-yo study to see if carbohydrate and or fibre intake interacts with glucose homeostasis and weight loss. In the study, 61 overweight people lost around 10 kilograms and were then followed for 9 months after that. At this point, they were given advice but no other coaching to stay on any specific diet. As shown by the horizontal line on this graph, they found no correlation between carb intake and weight regain. This was unexpected as they thought higher carbohydrate intake would be associated with weight gain. They found that fasting glucose was also not correlated to the carb intake. There was a non-significant negative association with fibre intake and weight regain, so eating more fibre was good, but it did not have any effect on the fasting blood glucose. The study authors pointed out some limitations of the analysis, including it being observational with a small sample and relying on self-reported eating habits, but fascinating that there was no correlation between weight regain and carbohydrate intake. And for our final item today, the Guinness Book of Records has identified a new holder of the world's oldest living man. Mr. Emilio Flores Marquez is 112 and 326 days old. Mr. Marquez has said that having love and avoiding anger and resentment are keys to a long and healthy life. And I have to agree with that. The oldest living person is Miss Kane Tanaka from Okinawa, Japan, who is now 118 years old and whom we spoke about in an earlier newsletter. Next, we found this interesting solar lamp project called Sune. It is developed by a Dutch designer, Marhan von Obel. It is a solar lamp that is designed to be hung in front of a window so it can store enough energy throughout the day to light up the room at night. If we are expecting to live longer and healthier lives, it behooves us to make better use of the resources on the planet. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.